I've jumped into sim racing this past December and in this video I want to explain how to use the Moza Pit House software because it was daunting at first and kind of confusing. It also like as you can see here is only works with limited games. It doesn't actually work with every single racing game. And it also brings with it a ton of settings and things that you can change that might very well overwhelm you. So we're going to start right at the beginning here on the homepage from what I understand so far of the software. So with the software installed all updated and you have your steering wheel, your base and your pedals and everything attached and turned on, you can see here I'm actually turning the steering wheel in person right now. You can see the degrees. What you'll first want to do is line up and calibrate all of your different things. For example, the steering wheel, when you line it up and you put it at where that little white line at the top is in the middle, you would then go ahead and hit this center key to set that position as center. So if, for example, if your center of your wheel in real life is actually in the center right now, but in the game, it's like, you know, 27 degrees to the left, you're going to want to realign it. Another thing you might want to do as well is with your pedals. I'm using the SRP light pedals. You'll see here when I press down my brake, for example, here, you can actually set the maximum amount. So if you want your brake not to be maxed out all the way at the bottom, like until you press it all the way to the edge, if you want it to max out more at like over here, you can set this at the maximum. The same you can do for the minimum so that the brake only applies once you've applied a certain amount of pressure, like from here, which I'm barely touching it right now. You also want to make sure that when you hold in the pedal all the way that it actually is reaching the maximum amount, especially for the throttle. Because if your throttle maxes out only at here, you're only going to get like 80 or 90% of max throttle, which is going to actually slow you down in most of your races. You want to make sure that when you put it all down to the floor, it reaches the entire end over there. If it instead stops like over here, I actually personally recommend like just going a little bit off over here so that it's not touching all the way at the back, but there's like just a little bit of room and set the max so that you can more easily reach the full throttle. Just be careful with how much you do this by though. In terms of your wheelbase, in my case, I'm using the R5 base. You're going to want to make sure this is always on 100% force feedback. This is because we're going to be using any of the games that we play to alter the force instead. So the base is going to apply its full 100% and the games are going to be changing the amount that it, it does from the game. So if, if it's too hard 100% now, you'll have the game that will bring it down to like the appropriate values or like reduced to feel better for certain games. And heading back to the wheel over here, you'll see that there's steering angles. Now, for most games, you're probably just going to use 900 because it's a very like logical setup over here. You'll see as I turn the steering wheel, the degrees go to the left. This is how much I can turn left. It's going to be a full rotation and pretty much there. A full rotation plus 90 degrees to the left to fully turn my tires to the left. And it will be the same for the right hand side. So it will be a full 900 degrees of, of motion. Now, this is not applicable for like every single game. Like I'm playing iRacing and I'm playing Formula One and they both drive incredibly different. So for Formula One, you're going to be using 360 degrees of rotation. This pretty much you'll see as I turn the steering wheel to the left, it stops right here. So it's just this left section. It doesn't go more than this which allows you to make a left turn with a lot less effort on turning your steering wheel. And you want to have the snappy controls for your car to be able to take these tight turns at high speeds. You can actually physically test this on your wheel because like it's actually physically stopping me from going beyond this point. So I know I've hit the, the limit there. And of course, on the other side, it stops there too. Now, at first, I actually spent a lot of my time, like every time I was playing a game, I was like, oh, cool, I'm playing iRacing or Forza Horizon 5. I would have to click the 900. And then when I play Formula 1, I'd have to go ahead and click 360 so that it would alter to what I'm playing. There's actually a way to set presets. And in those presets, you're going to change up how the game plays entirely as well. So in your second option here on the left hand side, this opens up the wheelbase. In the wheelbase, you'll see there's a whole bunch of sliders and stuff that can be very confusing. And I'm not going to lie, I'm still kind of confused by some of these too. But I'm going to give you a basis of what I currently use and what I've currently understood. And if you are an expert of these, please let me know in the comments down below if there are other things or other changes we can make too. So first things first here in the preset section on the basic settings, you can auto load a preset. So this pretty much means that if I have a preset for Formula 1 25, every time I open up that game, it will immediately default to this preset. 
Or alternatively, if I just click in this box here, I can use my iRacing one that I've made as well. This will go ahead and actually change it to my iRacing setup that I'm using. So it will change the sliders and anything that I've altered. For example, you'll see it's back to 900 degrees rotation for my steering. It will pick everything based on the settings I save in this preset. You can also import or export your presets if you like somebody else's and you wanna try theirs. So starting off with my iRacing setup over here, I'm gonna show you here where we have our steering angle already set on this section. We have synchronous options set on. So this means that if we're changing the steering angle within the game, it will favor what the game says rather than this 900. So because in iRacing, there's many different cars, not every single car is gonna use 900. There are Formula One cars or Formula cars in iRacing that will probably use 360s. So having this turned on allows the game to change the steering angle based on the car you're driving, which I highly recommend. And then we have the soft limit stiffness all the way to 10 here so that you can really feel the road in iRacing because every little bit of information you can get through your wheelbase and your steering wheel is gonna help you in iRacing because it feels like you're driving on ice when I play that game, at least for me. It's like, it's so fundamentally different from when I play Formula 125, which I feel like I have a lot more control and it's a more a matter of like technique and like, you know, speed and turning and stuff. Whereas iRacing, you have to control your pedals and everything a lot more advancedly. We also have the soft limit for the game force strength turned on. You can see my settings on the right hand side here. Feedback intensity all the way at 100 so that the game changes it itself. We have our full torque that we're using for the R5. It uses 5.5 newtons of force, I believe. The next major setting here is the maximum wheel speed, which increases the rotation speed of the wheel, which can help you for drifting. Now I've currently got this set on 40%, but I saw a lot of information that suggests between around like 20 to 30%. I've got to play around with this myself personally to like figure out my driving style because I'm still learning the techniques. So I'm still learning a lot, but this is currently fine with me. But maybe I'll change this as time goes on. If you're an expert, let us know in the comments down below what you would recommend for a beginner. And then moving on to the next section, advanced settings. We've got natural damping at 30%, natural friction at 40%, natural inertia at 200%. And on the right hand side, I have not changed any of these. These will mostly be default options over here. You can just see if you've accidentally changed something yourself. I also haven't changed any of these equalizers with these things because I don't understand them just yet. So I'm not gonna fiddle around with things and I'm not gonna tell you do this because I don't know how it works. When you're happy with all your settings, you can go ahead and save as, and this will make a new preset. Or if you're on an existing preset, for example, if I change this, it will allow me to hit the save button, which will save to the preset that I'm currently on, which is my iRacing preset. One thing you should know, however, if I hit save as over here, you can give the preset a name. You can select the game that it's gonna open up with. For example, I can have it open up in F125. And you can also select the car that it's using within that game so that it will only apply this preset when you drive a Ferrari. I can imagine the stuff you could add on that one. Or in iRacing, for example, you can have it select any specific car so that you have your own presets for every unique car in the game. Now this is the wheelbase, the place where your wheel plugs into, the one that gives you the force. The next thing we're gonna look at is the wheel itself. Now one thing I'm gonna recommend you do here is go into the section here and hit this button numbers thing here so that you can memorize, or not like memorize, but look where the numbers are for buttons because I can't tell you how many times I went into games like F125 and Forza Horizon and it's like press 32 to pit. And I look at my steering wheel and I see this and I'm like 32. What the freaking hell is 32? I only recently discovered that 32 is the pit button. In the same section, you're also able to set your RPM indicator so that on the wheel itself, these lights go from when you're accelerating or when you need to change gear, it goes from you know green, yellow, red, red when you need to change to the next gear. You can have this display on the wheel itself. Some of the games will do it automatically and you, you'll just have to configure with the game. Now I've done this with my games when I go to the home screen over here, you'll see on the right hand side, the game launcher, you can hit the config button, for example, for F125. And you'll see here, it's gonna give you these forwarding numbers, these different ports. 
And you'll just have to make sure this is the same within the game. Some of them allow you to just activate it here already, which mine is done. Games like Forza Horizon 5 are a little bit more difficult. It will give you numbers and you will have to go find those numbers or in the settings in the game to apply those numbers so that it applies the telemetry data for your accelerator onto the display of your steering wheel. To be honest, from this point, that's everything I've touched. You do have the pedals as an additional option to change how your pedals work. I'm not using a clutch, so I just focus on brake and throttle. Most of the games come with a auto clutch system anyway, so you don't have to have a clutch to play most of these games. But just know all of your options are located here. And if you have any additional add-ons like the screen display, the hub, the shifter, the gearbox, the handbrake, any of these, you can configure them here as well. I don't have any of these. And then quite simply, you just have to make sure that the Moza Pithouse software is turned on when you are playing these games for it to get the effect on these controls because it runs the wheelbase. You'll be further changing any additional settings within your games directly. But I hope this helped you understand the Moza Pithouse software a little bit better yourself. I hope you guys found this video helpful and also YouTube thinks you might like this video next. So check it out and let me know what you think.